when you look at the question, who benefited from Modi government's policies, 55% say big business, and this is very similar to what it was last time. Only 9% said small businesses, 8% said salaried class, 8% farmers, and 6% daily wage earners. So, you know, Sanju Varma, there seems to be bullishness within big business. There is a sense that things will get better, uh, investments will flow in, but informal sector, salaried class, daily wage earners, those who are unemployed, those at the bottom of the pyramid are hurting. Is there a recognition of that? Or is that all going to be covered by saying, don't worry, be happy? You know, Rajdeep, the problem with you is you ask a very lengthy question. The moment BJP starts answering, you start interrupting. Now, I hope you will listen to me very carefully. Don't interrupt and listen to me very carefully because you've asked a very pertinent question. It. I have not been rude to you. You should learn how to be less rude, but go ahead. Rajdeep, I don't need lessons in uh, demeanor and behavior from you. Thank you so much for your unsolicited advice. Now, let mm -hmm. me come to the point. Yes? Uh, like, you wouldn't uh, take lessons from me in journalism. I don't need to take lessons from you in how to conduct myself on a debate. Okay. Now, I will just say this to you. Uh, you know, what do you see here? This is a 500 rupee note. Then another 100, another 100, another 100, another 100, another 100. So basically, what am I talking of? I'm talking of 1,000 rupees. 1,000 rupees have to be distributed. This is under the Modi government. Bola jata bhai, ye 1,000 rupees direct benefit transfer ke tehet, garibo ko banta jai. What happens? The entire 1,000 rupees is distributed to the poor. No wonder, under the DBT, more than 28 lakh crore have been dispersed to the poor and the marginalized. That is precisely the reason that even the hit from inflation has been softened. Or rather, as they say, the blow has been softened. Now imagine that this was the Congress regime. 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000 rupees. 1000 rupees have to be disbursed under the Congress regime. Bola jata hai. Be it a Rajiv Gandhi or a, a Manmohan Singh or Sonia Gandhi's kitchen cabinet. At the end of the day, how much does the poor marginalized person get in his hand? He or she gets this. 10 rupees. Half me sir, 10 rupees aata hai. I have Why? to move on because to certain numbers. It's a very interesting analogy you've done. It, it's a compelling an analogy, but Let I have to go finish. by the numbers. You I seem will... to be denying the numbers. The numbers say people are Can hurting. I no, 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 no. Can I finish? Everybody no, has I limited need to time. Make my point. You, no, I you need made to make your my point. point. Give me you 20 seconds. Your point, Give me 20 you... seconds, please. Give okay, me 20, 20 seconds. seconds more. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Now, very quickly, just on inflation, cutting through the uh, noise. I'm comparing the inflation figures, and these are World Bank numbers, not what Sanjo Brahma is throwing off her hat. World Bank numbers last, uh, you know, five years of uh, UPA2. 10.9, 12%, 8.9, 9.48. 10%. Average of the last five years of UPA2, Congress-led UPA2, the average inflation was 10.256. Now, last five years under Narendra Modi, World Bank figures, 3.73, 6.62, 5.13, 6.7, 5.1. Average inflation, despite two black swan events, won the COVID pandemic and won the Ukraine-Russia Ukraine war. Despite that, average inflation under the Modi government is 5.45%. Okay, so the Modi government has done a brilliant job. I've given you time. You made a compelling argument that Supriya Shinet should respond to. Supriya Shinet respond because what will happen is that while people are saying yes, things are in unemployment serious, they're worried about inflation, when it comes politically, they will compare. And the first, you know, the reflection that Mr. Modi has handled the economy better than Dr. Manmohan Singh, 44 versus 42, more or less in, in the same range. But the fact is, overall macro... Uh, picture, people are not saying that the government has done bad. It's the micro level detailing where they are worried. And they will compare. So, so, you know, you should never tell a story which is half done. You should always paint the whole picture. I heard both Rahul and you quote Mr. Modi versus Dr. Singh. Let me quote the full picture for you. The January numbers of your survey, I'm quoting your survey, I'm not quoting my numbers. The January 2023 numbers put Dr. Manmohan Singh's handling of the economy at 36.2%.
he has gone up nearly six notches to 41.9 percent but mr modi has come down from you're still not coming back to no ma'am you will not intervene down seven percent you are still not coming back to power in 2020 the country That's the hard truth. No, no. Please, okay. please, please. Ma'am, she she listen to you. You must have the courtesy uh, to listen to others. What is this nonsense? Yeah, go ahead now. Supriya Shinen, please continue. So. So first, the whole picture. Mr. Modi's handling of the economy consistently dipping, even in your own survey. Compare January 2023 to August 2023, down seven odd percentage points there. The second data that both of you quoted, and I want to go back to the data because it's an important data. Handling of the economy of this government. It was 54 percent in January 2023. That's an outstanding. It's down to 47 percent there. So overall handling of the economy also down, poor and very poor. It was 27.6 percent about eight months back. It's down. It's over 32 percent, almost 31.1 percent right now. The last data that I want to point out, and this is a very important data because unemployment is the big Achilles heels of our times. Just compare the numbers. Consistently going up as far as the very serious category is concerned. Your own data that I'm quoting to you, and I heard you say that January 2022, the very serious unemployment problem was only at 45 percent, according to your own survey. It is at 55 and a half percent up, which is 10 and a half percent up from January 2022. It has consistently gone up. I'm just giving you. The stock up in that okay, number, okay. and of course, no, no, not at no, all. But what I find interesting now so is that while these numbers are there, no, no, I'll take your time. You made your point. You made your point because the fact is, while these numbers are there, what I find fascinating data, is that when you ask the question, I want to point out just ten seconds. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, very quickly, please. Ten seconds. Ten seconds, and that data explains it all. Between yes. 2004 to 2014, according to the new caliber, how these these guys calculate GDP, Indian economy grew at seven and a half percent. 2014 to 2023, the Indian economy has grown at an average of 5.7 percent. That answers every question. No, yeah, but, no but, matter but, but what the data say, doesn't always the real rate of there growth black is much, much There have been black swan events in 2008. There have been black swan events also in the last few years. So you know the data doesn't reveal the true picture. What fascinates me is the fact that while people are worried about unemployment, they are worried about prices. When you ask them the question of who are you going to vote for, you're not seeing that same. Voter, you're not seeing 72 percent of those who are saying unemployment is serious translating into anger against the government, or a large number of people saying prices are hurting, or uh, we are not being able to manage household budgets, translating in, translating into anger. You know, if you go back to 2013, Rahul, a year before Manmohan Singh completed, there was anger visibly. You know, Manmohan Singh's ratings had come down to 40 percent approval. Because people had lost faith in him. That's right. The and, difference and, is, despite 72 percent thinking. Unemployment is a big problem. They still think Narendra Modi is the best man to fix the problem. So I think what it shows, Raul, this survey is there is opportunity for the opposition. If the opposition was able to offer a better cohesive economic agenda, for example, that would convince people credibly that they could handle the economy better and provide genuine, genuine support to people, they may have a window of opportunity. Until then, people trust Modi because the same people who are saying economy, you know, the economic, the economic situation is serious. Still, perhaps believe in the leadership of Mr. Modi. So that's the disjunction in our poll on economy. The government is in trouble, is my sense. But it's still seen as a government you trust. I don't know whether Shankar Iyer has an explanation. No, whether but the it bigger question, anywhere. Shankar, is is the trouble behind us or is it ahead of us? Why I ask that is, if the worst days of uh, the COVID pandemic, the turmoil because of Russia and Ukraine. Uh, what happened with interest rates in the U.S. and elsewhere is behind us, as is being suggested. Then, going forward, the economic graph and the trajectory looks upwards. If, however, uh, there is trouble ahead, then that makes it tougher for the government as we build up to an election cycle. Well, two quick points. I think the finance minister herself, Nirmala Sitaraman, has mentioned that there is uh, a challenging time ahead. The IMF chief has said there is challenging. What we are facing is the post effect, or rather, the long COVID being experienced by the global economy. China and Europe, we know what's the story. U.S. probably will enter uh, contraction at the end of the year or next year. 
the challenge for india is to make things happen as its advantage it's the cup day moment for india is to how do you create those jobs how do you leverage the shift in supply chains how do you empower agriculture and in all this the role of state governments is very important which is why you see a divergence in the way people vote in the states and in the center particularly on issues so the one reason that the government uh, should uh, pay attention to uh, more attention to the unemployment at the bottom of the pyramid thing is that unless they the they fix the problems in the labor code land acquisition uh, and other issues you will have more and more states announcing things like the 2000 rupees bailout or the guarantee cards and india simply cannot afford that kind of uh, dole system it's also morally hazardous at some level so what what you what are these measures showing you that there is a, a great space opening up for alternate thinking you know if before the 2019 elections also the economy wasn't doing too well we had various reasons that demonetization the introduction of gst and the hit of that small sector took in uh, in the run up to 2024 the modi government also faces glo- uh, is facing global challenges the question is what has the opposition got to offer in terms of what template do they offer and i think this is the debate that should occupy space but i suspect that it will not you know i think that's a that's the critical question you know uh, and i think that shows in this poll rahul that while the economy is a serious concern until the opposition comes up with an effective narrative of how they would sort of transform people's lives people will say we'd rather trust mr modi as a stable leader who's been with us for no, the last so nine to, years to draw cricketing analogy the economic pitch is tricky to bat on but who's the best batsman to be batting on that pitch that's right can that's the opposition the pitch that there is a problem there is a problem the numbers are acknowledging people are acknowledging there are problems but but just by saying that there is a problem and now we will get a default mandate that is not okay. going to